sort of small to moderate number of people is great, as is something that makes even a small difference, but it but affects a vast number of people. Hello and welcome. Elon Musk is a billionaire entrepreneur who co-founded various companies like Tesla, SolarCity, SpaceX, and PayPal. He also helped influence the character behind Marvel's modern day take on Tony Stark and has been compared to other successful business visionaries like Steve Jobs and Henry Ford. Without a doubt, Elon Musk has already accomplished enough to be considered among some of the great. A homeowner or business owner, uh, a monthly lease payment. But what led him on his path to success? Musk started his first company with his brother Kimball in 1995 with money from a group of angel investors. They developed and sold an internet city guide for newspaper publishing, gaining contracts from the New York Times and the Chicago Tribune. That company, Zip2, was acquired in February 1999 for $340 million. From there, Musk co-founded XCOM, which eventually became PayPal. You know, that, that, that's, that's the question we could ultimately get closer to understanding. When PayPal was acquired by eBay, Musk received $165 million from the deal. Then came SpaceX. Musk decided to launch SpaceX when he attempted to buy a rocket, but was told it would cost him $8 million. Seeing this as far too expensive, Musk started SpaceX in 2002 as a quest to develop and manufacture affordable space launch vehicles. SpaceX boasts to have completed more than 100 launches. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Th that makes me glad to be alive. More than 6,000 employees and three vehicles, the Falcon, the Falcon Heavy, and the Dragon. Elon Musk's success continues to grow as he endlessly pushes the envelope with Tesla, SpaceX, and the handful of other companies that he has invested and co-founded along the way. So what's his secret to the enduring success? Well, he does have above average intelligence, which has played a large role in his achievements. However, despite his intelligence, Elon excels because of an extreme ambition. He's driven by his passions and that ambition, which is backed up by an insane work ethic. Another key that has led to his success is his willingness to take risks. Well, I think first of all, I should say that I do not expect to be involved in all these things. So the... In fact, his whole career has been a series of taking big risks. His fearless approach to turning his ideas into reality and the fearless action he takes to execute on those ideas is key to much of his success. He encapsulates the fearless attitude best when he said, when something is important enough, you do it, even if the odds aren't in your favor. With, given that the Chinese population is so concentrated along the coast, uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. Well, it, it goes back to when I was in, in university. I thought about what, what are the problems that are most likely to affect the future of the world uh, or future of humanity. I think it, it's extremely important that we have sustainable transport and sustainable energy production. That sort of overall sustainable energy problem is, is the biggest problem that we have to solve this century. Independent of environmental concerns, uh, in fact, even if producing CO2 is good for the environment, given that it's, we're, we're gonna run out of hydrocarbons, we need to find some sustainable means of, of operating. Um, there, there's two elements to that answer. One is that even if you take the same source fuel and, and produce power at the power plant and choose, use it to charge electric cars, you're still better off. So if you take, say, natural gas, which is the most prevalent to hydrocarbon source fuel, if you, if, you, if you burn that in a modern General Electric natural gas turbine, you'll get about 60% efficiency. If you put that same fuel in an internal combustion engine car, you get about 20% efficiency. And the reason is, in a stationary power plant, you can afford to have something that weighs a lot more, uh, is voluminous, and you can take the waste heat and run a steam turbine and generate a secondary power source. I didn't expect to be involved in, 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 in all of those things. I actually, at the time in college, I, I sort of thought helping with electrification of, of, the, of cars was, was how I would start out, and that's, uh, that's actually what I worked on as an intern, was um, advanced uh, ultra-capacitors to see if they, they would be a breakthrough relative to batteries for energy storage in, in cars. When I came out to go to Stanford, um, that's what I was going to be doing my grad studies on, is, um, is was working on advanced uh, uh, energy storage uh, technologies for electric cars. And then I put that on hold to start an internet company in 95 because 
there does seem to be like a time for particular technologies uh, when they're at uh, a steep point in the inflection curve. You know, do a PhD at Stanford and then and watch it all happen. And, and I wasn't entirely certain that the technology I'd be working on would actually succeed. Like you can get you can get a you know doctorate on many things that ultimately are not do not have a practical bearing on the world. You know, just I, I really was just trying to be useful. That's the optimization. What what, are the, what can I do that would actually be useful? You need to work, if you, if, depending on how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. And we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer. So the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. So briefly, I had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. W work hard, like, I mean, every waking hour. That's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. And, I mean, if you do simple math, you say, like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, you'll get twice as, done, as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. As Jonah was alluding to, there, there are a lot of negative things in the world. There's a lot of terrible things that are happening all over the world, all the time. Lots of problems that need to get solved. There's lots of things that are, yeah, that are miserable and kind of get you down. Life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need, need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. That's why we did this. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become its star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Uh, that, that makes me glad to be alive. I, I hope you feel the same way.